Our relationship with technology is reaching a breaking point. And today, we're going to talk about that breaking point. The culprit is artificial intelligence. It's a phrase that rolls so easily off our tongues. It is plastered across newsstands. Yet what is it? What is AI? An artificial intelligence system meets three features. One, it is autonomous. It can operate on its own. Two, it is learning. It uses algorithms to learn from large sets of data. And three, this is the most important, it is non-biologic. We made it, which means we set the conditions, we set the restrictions, and we set what we expect from it. And AI is doing some amazing things. I mean, it can write your term paper. Maybe don't let it do that. But it can write your term paper. It can detect cancer. It can make beautiful, original art. If there's a growing sentiment in the scientific community asking the question, what happens and when will we lose control of AI? It's a really complicated discussion, but I'm going to distill it down into a single graph and a single point. So the first line I'm going to draw is data, right? And so data has exploded in recent years. A lot of you might remember the big data movement. I mean, data was everywhere. It was being collected on everything and everyone and being stored by every organization. But to make sense of all of that data, we needed artificial intelligence. Now, artificial intelligence, most people don't know, started in the 1950s. But it was only when we had this much data with this much computing power that we could actually bring it to bear. And it has exploded in the past many years. This next line, that's us. I'm a great artist. <laughs> that's us. And that is our cognitive capacity. Now, I've drawn somewhat of a straight, flat line. And it's because our cognitive capacity is slow to evolve, much slower than this exponential growth of artificial intelligence. And it's this point, it's this point that we should worry about. It's the point where we go from being in control of artificial intelligence to losing control. And when I say losing control, I don't mean me losing control or you losing control. I mean companies losing control, governments losing control. It sounds like a bad movie. Okay, so below, what's an example of the below space? Well, the below space where we still have control, really easy, recommendation engines. I mean, pick your favorite streaming platform, they know what you've, what you've watched, and they suggest the next thing to watch. What's above the line? Let's go for a ride in an autonomous vehicle. We're driving down the road. A ball comes out in front of us, and a child is chasing that ball. To the left-hand side is a group of senior citizens walking down the sidewalk. To the right-hand side is a grove of trees. There is not enough time to stop. The car must make a decision. Not you, the car. What does it do? I mean, if it goes forward, it risks killing or injuring that child. If it swerves to the left, killing or injuring some senior citizens. Swerves to the right, killing or injuring the passengers. And despite all the best intentions and the best software engineering and the best everything, it's a really complicated problem because you have a lot of variables. You have the speed of the car. You have the speed of the ball. You have the depth of the curb. You have the size of the tree trunks. Working backwards from a cognitive standpoint as to why that machine made that decision is nearly impossible. 
it's kind of scary. But I am a human of hope. And I believe that we can do things together to stave off, or at least slow down, this progression along this curve. And for the sake of everyone out there, I believe that we have not progressed past this point. I believe we're on the cusp of it. So the first item. We need to demand more from our elected officials. We need to demand that they actually understand the technology that they are developing legislation around. Because the creators cannot keep themselves accountable. Here's an example. Last year, the Future of Life Institute published an open paper. And this open paper called for a six-month pause on the training of any system like GPT-4. And it was signed by almost every tech leader. But they did not turn around and ask their AI teams to stop working. There was one tech leader in particular, Sam Altman, at OpenAI, and he chose not to sign it. And I mean, maybe he didn't get the memo, uh, maybe he didn't uh, like the wording, or maybe he just didn't want to agree to something he had no intention of doing. We need to demand that our elected officials are knowledgeable enough to keep these technology companies under control. The second, every complex system that is around we deal with, we have systems to understand the risk for Hurricanes, we understand the risk by categories, for earthquakes, by magnitude. And we know what that means. We still do not have a risk assessment for artificial intelligence, and especially for the use of our very sensitive personal data. I mean, user license agreements, they're not friendly. I mean, there are a lot of small words and all that risk sits in that really, really small print. We need something like this to let us know better about what our risk is. We also kind of need a little bit of a grocery store analogy. If you went into a grocery store and you picked a box up off the shelf and there was no nutrition label, there was no description of where it was produced and how it was produced, et cetera, you would put it back on the shelf. If you didn't understand the price, you wouldn't buy it. If you couldn't dis discern the value between that product and another product, you know, price per ounce, stuff like that, you'd be mm, a little annoyed. We don't have that for technology, right? And on here, you know, what should, we, what should we actually demand? We should demand to know when are experts in the loop? When are humans in the loop? When have experts actually trained the system? What kind of personal information are they using? How are they anonymizing it? What are they gaining from it? You know, that value piece? What is the value per megabyte of our data for a company? And this leads me to my last point. Revenue sharing. The biggest tech companies, their market capitalization stretches into the trillions. And it's being made off of our data. Why are we not getting a piece of that? We need to step in and make that a reality. And there are ways to do this. There are great economic solutions to doing this. We just have to demand it. And think, if your data could actually represent dollarized value and purchasing power. So, I'm fairly hopeful. I believe that through better legislation and better knowledge for those lawmakers, I believe that with a better risk system, better understanding of user license agreements, that better labeling, and also this kind of revenue sharing, that we can actually stave off this point. But we can't do it without taking action. You've got to take action. I mean, 
totally, totally on our shoulders. And we cannot wait for someone else to do it. So, I'm hopeful. I am hopeful. And I have a request. If you take only one single thing from this talk, take away the fact that this point exists. Because when we exceed it and allow technology to run away, we have no one to blame but ourselves. Thank you.